we had two choices. It was either surrender and end up on a reservation or assimilate and become somebody different and still be free and survive. I am the president of San Antonio Mission Indian Descendants. Um, it is a group that we started in 2022. And the reason we started um, our organization was we saw the need for our community to be educated about the continued existence of Native Americans in our community. So um, we started off by just holding our first annual fry bread social in December of last year and took off running in January with workshops and um, presentations for anybody who wanted to attend, whether it would be virtually or in person. It's become a popular thing in the city amongst the descendants and other people. And so it's slowly started to grow. Um, and you know, we get a, quite a few people watching virtually on Facebook Live every month. It's become so popular that we have people asking if they can come and present for us. So most of our calendar is full for next year. So we've had presentations on um, how to search for your genealogy. Um, we've had people come um, present about the research that they've done. Uh, we're going to have a presentation on the meaning of the solar eclipse that's coming to Texas next month. When you look at different things at the missions, you see a lot of different influences. So you think it's mostly Spanish influence, that it's, you know, Catholic influence, but it, there, it really isn't. There is so much more there that if you sit and look, yes, the natives did a lot of, of different things in the carvings and the art that they put in there. You know, our, our Native American ancestors, although they had been Christianized or were being Christianized, they still observed a lot of their traditions. And so we know that the missions were built for us, but they were also built by us. And so the stars and um, the planets play a big role in our culture. And so we've come to realize that a lot of the rock art that was done in different places, you see um, over the wall on the outside of the, of the doors, there is, um, a carving that represents like the stages of the moon. It uh, aligns with how our missions were built and they built them along the river, right? And so this year, the way the, the uh, planets align will align along the river um, on each one of the missions according to how the rock art shows. One of the other things that I find very interesting, because not only am I Native, I'm also Jewish. And so when I go to Mission Concepcion and I see this huge uh, painting of um, the Virgin, right, standing on top of an eclipse, but above her name is written the holy name of God in Hebrew. So you have the native influence with the virgin standing on the eclipse, but then the Jewish influence with the holy name of God that cannot be pronounced written in Hebrew. So yeah. my ancestors have their fingers all over. We're learning so much yeah. because for both my cultures, both my Jewishness and my indigenous cultures, the moon, the stars, the planets are very important to us. We harvest, um, we plant according to the planets and the moon, the stars, 
all of it plays a huge role for us. Yeah. I think it's just really interesting seeing how it all ends up together. Like what she said about the Hebrew letters and but it being at the missions. I think it's really cool to see both of that there like because you see both of yourself like I have a lot of sides but you see those two sides together in one place and that really makes you feel like you belong there. Christella and I connected on Ancestry actually and so when she reached out to me and said hey we're cousins I didn't know her name, but I knew there was family out there um, that had been distanced from ours for a long time. Now you have to understand that my mom had been distanced from her side, from her mother's side of the family for almost 50 years. You know, then along comes ancestry and you start finding all these relatives and so Christella and I connected through Ancestry. So when she reached out to me, I had heard of her, not by name, but I knew of the family, that that family existed. And so, you know, it was like a quick connection. Um, and so she was like, you know, I'm doing research. And so I sent her everything I had, you know. And so she starts going through it. You know, I, I sent her all the information. Look, this is... This is our line, and here's where I found it. But I think she knew a little bit more than I did because her father would take them on like survival trips and stuff because he would tell them we are native. The huge difference between Christella and I is that Christella's grandfather was the oldest in the family. So he grew up with their grandparents. My grandmother was the youngest daughter. So there was like a 15 year difference in them, uh, in between her oldest and, and the youngest daughter. Um, and so he knew the truth. My grandmother did not. So even if my uncle would say, this is what is happening, this is the truth, his mother would quickly say, that is not true. That is not who we are. So who are you going to believe? The brother or the mother? Mm. So my grandmother would say, this is what my mother says. We are not native. We are Spanish. So Christella grew up with her grandfather teaching his children that they were native. But we grew up with my grandmother saying, no, you're not. What was more confusing to me was that my uncle had uh, a daughter and three sons, or he had two sons, two daughters, and we were very close to one of his daughters. And when I would question her, she would say, we are not native. What? What? <laughs> What, you know, why are you saying we're not native? Um, if her father grew up with our great grandfather, uh, you know, or our great great grandfather, you know, for me it would be my two times great grandfather. If he grew up with him, visiting with him, and knowing that he was native, why are you saying no? So it was very confusing. And she would acknowledge, hey, this is our grandmother, you know, this is our grandmother, your mom's grandmother and my grandmother, and this is where she was born. Okay, but his records say, Indio de esta misión. So what's happening, you know? Um, she wouldn't let us go further than our great-grandmother, who was born and baptized in La Soya, Texas which is about a mile and a half up from my home, you know? Um, so it was like, how are you looking at this? The records do not reflect them as Espanol. What is happening? What is happening? 
Um, and then later on, you start doing more history. You start, you know, doing genealogy goes way beyond just looking for your ancestors. You start looking at what was happening where you live during the time that your ancestors were alive, right? So we knew that he had been born the year that the Battle of the Alamo took place. And then you start seeing all these records about what was happening to the natives. And I'm not going to say that as a native person, we were not guilty of some atrocities. Absolutely. We did a lot of things that we shouldn't have done either. But I think we were fighting for survival. You know, we were fighting for our way of life. Because I think to a certain extent, they understood that things were changing and that they wouldn't be able to continue with the status quo anymore. Things were gonna change, and they did. They changed very quickly. And so when you start reading and looking at those things, you start to understand why certain things were hidden from us so that we could survive. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. I think she's right, especially about the last part. Like, I'm very fortunate because she grew up where you couldn't do anything, but now it's like, it's extremely better. Now I can be who I want to be. Like, now I don't have to be scared of my skin color or something. Like, Judaism is still difficult because you see a lot of anti-Semitism, but being Native American, it's a lot easier than it was. And now that laws are coming into place, we're able to speak about the atrocities that happened towards us. And not to make people feel guilty, but we want people to know that this is what happened, this is history. You can't change what happened. But you, can, you can't change history, but you can change the future. Mm -hmm. You can change the here and now. And that's the most and, important part. Yeah, you can change the here and now and make it better. You know, but I um, think that starts with having to realize what happened. You can't just hide away from it. If you don't acknowledge it, you can never change. Absolutely. You know, um, to not it, it, it's cliche to say you not to not acknowledge the past is to continue to make the same mistakes over and over. And I think that's what is happening now is there's been an awakening. You know, things happened. Bad things happened. Let's acknowledge them, let's begin to heal, and let's do better, you know? And that, I think, has been the most beautiful thing that could ever happen to anybody, is the acknowledgement and the beginning of a healing. And the healing, to me, doesn't begin in the government, it doesn't begin in Washington, it doesn't begin in the state house, it begins with each individual person. That's where it has to come from. It has to come from me, you, the person next to me, because you can't legislate these things away. You can't. It's a very personal thing. So when an individual person begins to acknowledge this happened in our history and it was not okay, then they start to change how they behave and what they put out into the universe, right? When you start putting out healing into the universe, then healing begins to happen with everybody.